All right, gonna show you this interesting news story, which further proves the point that Hinduism is not always peaceful and pluralistic as it's portrayed as. When you get when you get down to the point, Hinduism is just like Islam, it's just like Roman Catholicism, it's just like atheism, just like Talmudic Judaism. It's a violent, murderous, bloody religion. That's what Hinduism is. And Western Hindus may seem all peaceful, may seem all pluralistic, but then when, when you go to India, a lot of these radical Hindu nationalists, they want a Hindu theocracy, they want a Hindu state where Hinduism is a state religion and other religions are banned. And where beef is banned because the cow is sacred, so because they worship the cows, they're cow worshippers. So they don't have holy god, they have holy cow. Funny. But they want a state, they want state enforced Hinduism over in India. Some of these Hindu radical groups. And they persecute religious minorities like uh, Christians, Muslims, and you know, Islam is satanic, Islam is demonic. Okay, that is true. But the answer is not to ban Islam, the answer is to preach the gospel to the Muslims, which obviously Hindus don't believe the gospel, but just you know what I'm saying if you're a Christian. But I'm going to read you this article on uh, international Christian concern, which proves the point that Hinduism is not all as peaceful and pluralistic, and that Hinduism, when you get down to it, it is a violent, bloody religion, violent, murderous, bloody religion. Contrary to what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 12, 18, that Christians are supposed to be peaceful, live peaceably with all men. You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers. Uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 and 21, things like murder and envy and, and lasciviousness are lusts of the flesh, sins of the flesh. So murder is wicked, it is sinful, and this thing of, of we're going to just kill the get our theocracy is unscriptural. Jesus said in, in John 18, 36 that his kingdom's not of this world, otherwise the servants would fight. That's what sets Christianity apart from Roman Catholicism, apart from Islam, apart from Hinduism, apart from Talmudic Judaism, apart from atheism, is that Bible believing Christians, we don't seek an earthly kingdom, we don't seek an earthly state. Hindus, atheists, Muslims, Catholics, uh, Talmudic Jews, they all seek an earthly state, which is Christians, we don't want to see. We set our affections on things above, not things on earth. But I'm going to read you this article. It says, according to Asia News, uh, Ra Rajesh Gupta, I hope I'm saying that right, a Christian pastor and his family were brutally attacked by radical Hindu nationalists with sharp weapons uh, while Pastor Rajesh was reciting a prayer in his home of another believer. A friend of a friend rescued Pastor Gupta and his family and drove them to the hospital where his wife remained hospitalized with a fractured fractured hand and leg. It was registered it was registered as a second attack against Christians in Farayabad this this year. I hope I'm saying that right. On June 20, a group of Hindu fundamentalists attacked an educational center, part of the Grace Assembly of God Church in Faryabad, and placed a Hindu deity statue. Soon after, Bahati, a, a Protestant pastor, was ambushed, beaten, and fatally hit in the head by Hindu radicals with a sharp weapon. The Christian community has called for justice over the murder of Bahati and the rising violence against Christians. Quote, it is a pity that a few days before the Independence Day, Indian Christians are denied the freedom to pray and preach. Uh, Sajan George, president of the Global Council of Indian Christians, told Asia News, quote, not everyone enjoys the freedom of worship and even the privacy of their homes, not everyone enjoys the same privileges. And this proves my point of why there needs to be a separation of church and state. Because when you have state-enforced theocracies, even in, in countries like China with state-enforced atheism, even home churches in the privacy of your own home, you can't meet together. So, like I said, Hindus in the Western world, they're pretty peaceful, they're very pluralistic, but you go to a Hindu nation like India, they want to have a Hindu state. And even when you're worshiping in the privacy of your own home, not bother anyone, just in your own home, on your own property, they can't even stand that. The Hindus want to shut that down too. This is why you have that separation of church and state, which guarantees religious freedom. That simple. And same thing over in China. They don't have separation of church and state. See, state enforced atheism, I could go off on this, but I'm not going to go too long. State enforced atheism and separation of church and state are two very different things. Atheists, when you have state enforced atheism, it means the state controls the church. State uh, separation of church and state is where the state and the church are separate and the atheist government can infringe on the religious freedom of the church. Same thing over in India, when you have this, if you, if you had the separation of church and state, these Hindu nationalists, they couldn't just barge in and, and shut down your worship. That's simple. So this is why you have that separation of church and state, to protect your freedom. So professing Christians who go against that separation are 
basically going against their own rights and their own freedom. It's very dangerous to have no separation, church-state separation, because they get, get, can get in the bounds of state-enforced theocracies or state-enforced secularism and atheism, like they have over in China, like they have over in uh, places like Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, uh, India, all that stuff. You had that, that separation there. But this proves my point. You know, house churches, even house churches are attacked. So the Hindus, they want to subjugate India and turn it into a Hindu theocracy where Hinduism is state religion and other religions are banned. Proves my point. So I uh, just wanted to show you guys that. It's pretty crazy how Hinduism is always portrayed as peaceful and pluralistic, but I've shown on the website numerous Hindu scriptures, which, I mean, these Hindu fundamentalists are attacking these Christians. When you actually read their Hindu scriptures, which I've shown on the website, they're just simply doing what the Hindu scriptures say because the Hindu scriptures promote violence. That simple. So don't be deceived by Hinduism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.